Hey everybody, I wanted to take some time to show you this new game that's coming out from Game Labs, and I have to give a big shout out to Pocket Passer, who is a uh, viewer on this channel, who was actually the one who tipped me off to this. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how I wasn't already aware of this development, uh, because Ultimate Admiral and Ultimate General games from Game Labs have become uh, a big backbone of this channel, and I know many of you are pretty passionate about these games. And so I wanted to take a look today uh, at what we know about Ultimate General American Revolution. Now, you're going to notice right away it definitely has the same look and feel as Ultimate General Gettysburg, Ultimate General Civil War, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. But there is a lot that is different about this game, a lot to be excited about. So I'm just going to kind of take you through and kind of comment on what we see. Uh, there's very little available so far, but we can see uh, some things about this game. So it's a sandbox strategy game featuring the epic historical period during the rebellion of the American colonies against the British Empire. You can take on the role of the British or the American colonists and fight for ter territorial control over North America. A gripping real-time campaign awaits you on a detailed 3D map where you can build your army and navy, construct military infrastructure, and fully command your armies on a regimental level. If you want even more action, you can fully zoom in and fight massive battles on a battalion level. So there's a lot to like right off the bat, a real-time campaign. Uh, so it's not going to be the linear campaign that we've seen in Ultimate General Civil War, which I know as great as that game was, was probably the biggest drawback to that game is that once you played the campaign through, you knew what all the battles were going to be. So there's very little that could change. This seems to be a dynamic campaign uh, that happens in real time. And you can kind of see here on the left, kind of a, a, a zoomed out view where you can see uh, entire divisions uh, in some cases moving forward against uh, British troops here, it looks like in Providence, Rhode Island, that area. You can see Boston in the background, Worcester over there, Peekskill. Uh, there's a fort there. So that's pretty cool. But then you see over here on the right, you've got the zoomed in view. Now we're looking at uh, units of 100 to 250 men. We've got cavalry. We've got infantry. Uh, that's exciting to me, especially if you can zoom right out from out here into that. In real time, that's awesome. It's something I'm excited about. Fight in real time on the global map with regiments and naval squadrons. Move your general to gain the tactical control of the situation in a minimal way. The presence of the general makes it possible to control the troops or ships directly on a map. Actively use maneuvers, cut supply routes, utilize different types of terrain, and flank with cavalry. The battles can be fought with more detail and full tactical control by zooming in further on the map. You can see the size of this battle right here. And now keep in mind that compared to the Civil War, the, the Revolutionary War battles were very small. Um, you know, the, the largest Revolutionary War battles were talking, what, 20, 30,000 on the field? Most of them much, much smaller than that. Um, so you can see here units of, you know, you know, we've got several thousand on each side in this case, and that's probably about as big as it's going to get. Uh, in that case, if you choose to fight the battles with full tactical control, the regiments become divided into smaller battalions, allowing you the command of hundreds of units in real time, creating a dazzling and realistic combat experience of the historical period. Troops are positioned in a landscape according to the placement that they had on the map, at the given time, some will engage the enemy immediately, others can be repositioned in deployment zones, while those, uh, those which were further away may join later as reinforcements. So definitely very different than what we're used to from Game Labs in their previous games. So let's take a look now. We've got uh, delayed reporting. Uh, realistic recon rec reconnaissance is simulated making messages the basis of military intelligence and battle maneuvering. Messages can be delayed or be intercepted by the enemy. That's awesome. I love that. Resulting in your orders not reaching your troops in time or rendering communication with your distant territories impossible. And so we can see that on the map here. And this is the same area we saw in the previous map. But it looks like it's a little earlier, perhaps, or um, a little bit different time. The last report from Newport lists its garrison as three British regiments. There's a report about a battle outside of your general's control area. The battle started a few days ago, so you do not have full information about what is happening now. You'll frequently receive reports about the locations of Cornwallis and the British Army. The frequency of the reports depends on distance, population loyalty, and espionage level. But reports can be inaccurate, so you can never be absolutely sure of the actual situation. So I'm, I'm getting the sense that they're... I'm not saying that they're borrowing these things from Grand Tactician of the Civil War. 
Uh, I'm, but what I'm saying is I, I'm, I'm getting a feel for some of the good things that are making Grand Tactician such a unique game, uh, that they're bringing some of that to this game as well. So uh, that's really cool. So now we look at supply. Uh, build your army and fleet. You will need a strong army and navy to win the war. Form infantry regiments, cavalry squadrons, and fleets. Assign the best officers and equip units with the strongest weapons to increase their power. You have to choose how best to manage your recruits. Create new units or replenish casualties. Such decisions may have a huge impact on the course of the war. Uh, so I can't really zoom in on this. Um, I could probably zoom in in the editing, but I can't make it any high resolution or anything like that but we can get a little bit of sense of the army um, management we've got corps and divisions uh, here and then these must be the brigades within those divisions uh, and then you've got information here and it looks similar to what you see on uh, ultimate admiral age of sail uh, here military infrastructure lead your troops to victory develop regions that provide food weapons and ammunition for your army and navy Build military structures to uh, train special recruits or host your army during the harsh winter. Build infrastructure to raise supplies and plan supply routes that reach your armies while they are fighting. That's going to be complicated, and that's awesome, and I love that. Uh, supply your troops. Army or fleets cannot be maintained uh, without effective industrial base. Produce rifles, cannons, and build ships. A single shot needs powder and a bullet. War requires tons of powder and thousands of bullets. Organize and prioritize the production chain to fulfill your army's requirements. So you can see here, it looks like the ability to invest in, uh, this almost feels a little bit like Hearts of Iron, the way you see what it takes uh, to produce ammunition, uh, money, it looks like metal, powder, uh, supply. Uh, you've got the six pounder field pieces here. I love, I'm really excited about all of this. Let's see what else they've got. Army management. You have full control over your army's composition. Available recruits are determined based on your success in battle and the loyalty of the population. Use these recruits to create divisions, brigades, and regiments. Keep your soldiers alive and they will learn to fight better, turning them from green rookies into crack veterans. Take too many casualties and you might not have enough recruits to reinforce your units and win the next battle. Lose too many battles and the population's loyalty and army morale will drop and the war will be lost. Supply is essential. Three base supply items are needed for each unit. Weapons, ammunition, and food. Weapons and ammunition are provided by weapon factories. Weapons are received when a new unit is created, and later these weapons can be replaced by better ones according to availability. Ammunition consists of gunpowder, bullets, and balls, which are spent in battle and must be replenished for maintaining your army in a minimum fighting condition. It's also necessary to constantly supply your army with food, otherwise non-combat losses will grow. Uh, so they can forage uh, a territory for food, but in this case, the welfare of the region and the loyalty of the population will deteriorate. So I love that all of that is going to be a factor in this game. Uh, by the way, if you want to read all this for yourself instead of just listening to me read it, uh, you just go to UG1775.com. That is the website for the game. And I'm not going to read every single one of these. These are just going to give additional details. Uh, and you can kind of s go through all of these yourself. Um, the game uses realistic line of sight through a physical ray model. For each unit, it is calculated with multiple beams, what obstructs its vis visibility. So that's that's really cool that they're using all of that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I want to really cover uh, too much here. Realistic ballistics. The game implements realistic physics for the flight of shells and the accuracy of guns. You need to very carefully select targets so that a random projectile does not land at the back of your own army ranks. So, you know, that was something we saw that was a big change from Ultimate General Civil War to Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail was the implementation of friendly fire, which was a non-issue in uh, Ultimate General Civil War. So I'm glad that's going to continue into this one. I do want to talk about this for a second. You decide the uh, level of army control. Command every unit individually or just give them a goal with a single click and watch to see if they can take that hill. Draw a defensive line, and the allocated brigades will defend it like lions. Design a deep flanking maneuver by just drawing an arrow and send the whole army to the enemy flank or rear. Army division commanders can also make decisions on their own to help you control a large army. Your generals will try to fulfill your orders, although no plan survives contact with the enemy. So uh, unit control, you know, skirmishers are a thing just like in previous games. Officer progression... 
uh, is also uh, being able to increase skills such as reconnaissance or political influence um, and it allows them to meet, lead larger units uh, more effectively. Uh, delayed command, which again, uh, this is an optional feature, but that's a, a feature that uh, I really have come to love in Grand Tactician Civil War, uh, is that it does take time for orders to reach troops instead of things happening instantaneously. So I like that a lot, and I'm glad that's going to be a part. Naval combat is a part of things. Uh, so it's going to be kind of the best of both worlds with the uh, Ultimate Admiral and Ultimate General. You can be the Americans or the British, uh, which we've already talked about. Now it does have a Buy Now button, and it says the game is currently in active development. With the limited edition, you immediately gain access to the development build and start playing. There is not, however, an available development build to be played. Uh, when you click on the Buy Now button, it just takes you to a screen where you can enter in your name and email, and you can get updates about when that will happen. Uh, now, I, I'm already signed up to receive all of their updates, uh, and I will definitely uh, make sure that uh, as soon as I have access to the game, and I would expect I'll have it early because they gave, gave me a, a copy of their previous games uh, for early release and allowed me to start playing those right away so i expect that'll happen again uh but if i have to buy it that's what i'll do too that's totally fine uh so make sure you subscribe to this channel turn on the notifications anytime there's new information about this game you will find it here as soon as possible let me know your thoughts about what you've seen and if you have any specific questions i'll try to get answers for you use the comment section below i'm looking forward to this one this is something we will definitely be playing a lot of on the channel when it comes out until then thanks for watching